welcome to Stellar Style. I'm your host, Lydia Today I will be interviewing a wonderful painter, an abstract painter, George Shulman. Hi, how are you? Nice I'm to have good. you on the show. Nice for having me and glad to be here. Yeah, I had met uh, George at Ferguson's event. They, it's a new store that opened up on Willis Avenue in Roslyn with spectacular lighting. And, you know, we started conversing and I'm a huge fan of his art. Um, so tell us a little bit about your art and yourself. So uh, how did your whole art originate? Have you always been doing it or was something you, you know, started doing later in life? Uh, as a youngster, I was raised by my grandparents in the Bronx and my grandmother was a uh, seamstress. My grandfather was a tailor. Uh, my grandmother made wedding dresses, and I was always drawing on paper bags and copying things, and I learned to sew at an early age, and I liked uh, dressing up into different, uh, with different costumes, uh, and I was a very creative child. And you sound uh, like you come from a very creative family, too, so it's very, good luck. <laughs> very creative right? family. Uh, another person in my life who had a great uh, impact on my life was a woman named Frida Diamonds, who was the daughter of my grandfather's sister. And Frida Diamond is the originator of color coordinates. Oh. And Frida Diamond also had her own uh, stemware company uh, and is the originator of the No Sweat Glass. She's in the Smithsonian. Uh, and I worked for her and, and, and I used to go to her home on weekends and she would babysit me. So she had a litany of actors. Uh, she dated uh, a guy named Paul Robeson, who okay. was a wonderful black uh, uh, actor who I met as a kid. And Agnes Moorhead used to babysit me. And so she, she in that environment had... Uh, yeah, how did she simulate your passion for art? What was her influence? She had Chagall, she had Picasso, she had Miro in the home. Oh, wow. Ben Sean. Uh, and, and so besides a, a marvelous library, she also had uh, original art from Japan that was okay. given to her by the Japanese government. So she had sculpture, and her husband was a pretty good sculptor, and he was in a, a brownstone on 37th and uh, Lexington Avenue. Okay. And uh, so I was always immersed around art, and uh, as a kid I went to art school. Uh, when I say kid, I'm talking about nine years old. I took a couple of buses, oh, you did. And, and I was allowed to go myself, and I had skipped two grades. And, and I was a very precocious, bright kid. Uh, I could count and tell time at the age of five. Oh, wow, impressive. And now, did your artwork um, originate, you originated doing paintings originally, or you started off with other creative outlets? Or what, what occurred projects? was, uh, coincidentally, they sent for these art books uh, that was a gift to me. When I say art books, I'm talking about Rembrandt, Vincent van Gogh, Maurice Utrillo, Corot, uh, Matisse, the best of the yeah. best. And I'm talking about, I was like at the age of seven, so I used to look at these mm -hmm. and I would copy them. Oh, really? And, and then I would use crayons and crayons gravitated to shoe polish oh, and, and, and nail polish. And then there was no shoe polish in the house to. So polish. it's whatever you could get your hands on, George. <laughs> uh, I, That's good. I That's was creative. secretive, All right. creative. Uh, and I kept this stuff, and what would happen was invariably people would like it enough and not believe a kid did it, that they would ask how much were they and they would buy them. And then uh, I gra gravitated toward raising the bar and I decided to go to a school called New Skin Art High School where you take a competitive exam. And what was very uh, nice is instead of going with my dad who took me to Central Park and he did softball games uh, and he had the stage, uh, the Actors Guild account where he did the softball games for them. So on one night he said, oh, we'll watch the Playboy Bunnies. Uh, and I wasn't interested in that no? stuff. 
No. The, no. <laughs> no, I went. Uh, here's the thing. Not the I went. Bunnies? No, no, I went to the... George de- was telling me during the break you did some nude modeling too, right? Yes, <laughs> but, but here's the thing. Yeah. There was um, the Delacorte Theater, which Robert De Niro okay. and, 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 I mean, Al Pacino, right across from, from the softball diamond. So I used to go to the Delacorte Theater and, and do watercolors and Shakespeare in the park. Oh, very nice. Uh, which really turned my father off because he was not comfortable with my with- male whatever he wanted me to be an athlete and i wanted to be an artist uh so well, art's obviously your innate gift right now, what would you describe you do like a cu- uh cubism right picasso cubism type of style uh, really what what style. occurred was i was strongly influenced if you said who are your your strongest influences i would say ironically if you put van gogh and william de kooning in a blender and throw in some matisse and titian that's you that's who i became (laughs) so i was very interested in not only what goes on top but what was underneath and if you fanned it out and had a deck of cards or cut these things up and intermix them uh, it became interesting to me to fracture the space and figure out how I could uh, make my things more interesting for the viewer and more interesting for me to paint. So I, I never know which direction they're, they're going to go. And how I'm able to do this is I use uh, acetate and I draw and then I have several layers of acetate and and sometimes people think they're computer generated. Oh really? Uh, so I how always, many? How much layering would you say you do in one? Sometimes piece? fifty layers. And and the other thing that I use, which is uh, my cheat sheet, I Xerox drawings. Oh, all right. And I I use an industrial Xerox copier uh, where they use it for people that do architectural drawings. So I'm very interested in the foundation and the drawing. Uh, as an armature, as a beginning start, yeah. but what is the most fun for me is I'm a gifted colorist, and and I can draw with either hand, and so and you're ambidextrous. yeah, I'm ambidextrous, I and and I actually could put the can pencil. Can you do it be- both skillfully? As yeah, skillfully? yeah, I can even draw where I can put the pencil in my. No, you toes. do the you do the, the yeah, foot drawing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I once right. I once had this joke. Okay. That I would play the piano with Have my it, like, hands, two hands and, and one draw foot. Richard yeah. Nixon's <laughs> with my feet when he left the White House, just as a, you know, bash this guy kind of thing. But but the 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 thing that's curious to me uh, is not only how you do it, mm-hmm. but. Uh, how long it takes and and the fact that you're always building how long would you approximate it takes you to do one painting i never know oh you don't Th- this okay. whole this whole thing the, the key to doing all this which is the most interesting thing to me and, and how you get good is you do a lot of looking right. you're constantly looking i do more looking than actually physically doing but the thing is, I have an acute memory where if I make a change, I know what happened before and I know what's going after. Mm-hmm. So, so my thing and what keeps it interesting to me, it's almost like having a romance. I have multiple romances at the same with time painting. with my painting. And, it's, and it becomes a love affair. And, and the more I love it and the more patient I am. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know it's special. It's not only special, a calmness comes over me. All right. There's a, there's a change in my breathing, there's a change in my uh, body language. All right. I'm, I'm very interested in, which is interesting to me, uh, what's around me, the environment. Mm-hmm. And, and, uh, well, I was reading um, you, your biography, right? And you, you like a lot of scenic views from nature, right? Yeah. That inspires a lot of your yeah. artwork. Yeah. Uh, not only that, I, I like visual uh, disparities, meaning if you said to me, what's your favorite place, I would immediately say San Francisco. Really? Why not so? Because I love the, the uh, cuteness of the streets and the, the ups and the downs and, and the fisherman's wharf and the energy. And although I'm, I'm a New Yorker at heart and I'd want to stay here, 
I could actually see going there from for part of the year and, and doing uh, a body of drawings. Oh, really? I like traveling, and I like traveling because there's an unfamiliarity to the mm -hmm. place. I did some of my best work in Rome from the bathroom uh, near the Vatican, where I was looking out the bathroom window, and I did the as well as in Venice, and I did these uh, paintings on um, menus. Oh, wow. of, of the uh, place where we were staying, and they started selling them to uh, pe people that were uh, patrons of the facility, and the people loved it, and I loved well, doing I imagine. it. imagine, and Rome and Venice is so spectacular, how could that not, you know, conjure up inspire all this, you. Like, well, inspire you? Well, what I liked, what I, what I really uh -huh. like is I, I collect things, okay. and I never know what I'm going to find, and I liked the graphic nature of putting my stuff on something else that already was a ready-made, that had the typeface, that had the lettering. And so I'm constantly uh, looking for fabric or buttons or, or things that I can use to make marks. Uh, lettering interests me, types of lettering. So when I, when I do what I do, I'm very interested in multiple, using multiple materials. Okay. Um, we're going to take a commercial break and I'm talking, I'm um, going to talk more with um, George Shulman about his artwork and all the beautiful things that inspire him and we'll talk more about the materials he uses and places he showcases his work. So we'll take a commercial break and we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Tim Stead I'm from Star Communications. We're a marketing support company. And if you need help with your next marketing project, please call 273-1900 or you can go to our website, starcommunications.us. Welcome back to Stellar Style. I'm your host, Lydia Ann. I'm with the wonderful, wondrous artist, George Shulman. Hi, George. Welcome back. Hi. We took a little commercial break. Um, what's really fascinating about George is that he also does a lot of Judaic art, right? There's a Judaic Correct. influence in your art, right? Would you tell us a little bit about that? Well, I'll tell you about that, but I'll tell you uh, a little post component in reference to that. Before I did the Judaic art, I did a series of paintings about the Bronx and being in the Bronx and I used coffee bean bags and I used a lot of referencing to uh, Latin uh, phrasing and I speak some Spanish and, and I was interested in lettering and graffiti so the point to where I'm going with this is uh, several references. I'm named after uh, my great-grandfather was a cantor and a poet, uh, George Shulman. And uh, my grandmother kept a kosher home who raised me. And uh, I can read Hebrew. And, and uh, I was very interested in, in writing. And so in reference to the spirituality and the spiritual component in my work, referencing my roots and the Bronx and this uh, earlier series that I spent about five years doing uh, because I was so uh, intuitively interested in materials and sewing and, and drawing and, and multiple layerings of different materials, by the time I got into the Judaic theme it was, an, it was a perfect storm because I had all this other earlier work that I didn't know would impact on the newer work in such a, a vital and structurally strong way. So by the time I got into the, the writing and the drawing and the text and the storytelling, because when I do what I do, for me, it's always a metaphor and, it, and it's always about telling a story. So you implement that into your artwork? Like, do you use any of... Judaic writing in your art. I use Judaic writing, okay. I use Judaic phrasing, and I use stories from the Bible, and I read a great deal. 
and so the reading always impacts on on my my journey even if i'm not an initially familiar with what i'm going to do i'll take a phrase and and many times i reference the thesaurus and i'll just flip to a page point to a word and i feel i'm kind of uh connected to a higher power where I should use that word in the painting or that's part of the hook or part of the challenge and sometimes I'll hide this word and you won't immediately see it but I'll, and, I, and I won't use the same typeface for each letter or color but, uh, but I will interweave these things because uh, What's curious to me is how you see the painting from a distance and how you see it up close. What I love about art, too, is how people interpret the art, because everyone has a different interpretation. Everyone um, looks at artwork and it resonates with them or calls out to them for different reasons, which is wonderful. Um, now this piece, for instance, you created this piece and I see that you use a lot of colors, right? I see a lot of primary colors. Correct. I see texture, which is very nice. And you, you have gold, right? Actual gold. See, what, what interests me... Uh, How long did it take you to, to do... This I'll took on and off about a year. A year. Uh, I, I did like 40 of these panels, and I like the wooden panels because it resists the paint and the paint builds up. Oh, interesting. But because I'm, I'm very interested in making things, and, and when you make something, it slows the process down where I wanted this thing as, as, as unfamiliar and at the same time I wanted to be as passionate as I could so it wasn't store bought so okay. that anyone seeing it would say hey he loved doing this and it's not easy to do so I, I mounted linen to the wood to the and then I used gold leaf as a ground wow. uh, actual gold like a gilder then I painted over that then I superimposed the gold back into the painting which had to do with an influence from uh, Italian painting that I had seen uh, I'm very in sync with art history and, and past paintings so I'm always looking at other other people's work so you try to embed those um, those well, I incorporate, yeah, I incorporate and I, 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 I actually have Xerox shapes, trace them, and impose them in the work. So it's, it's kind of my little trick smile. Oh, where okay. I, have, I have certain masters, either shapes or mm -hmm. forms or a mustache or something of something of, of someone else's okay. work. It's kind of my own secret joke on the viewer. Alright, nice. Now do you do also artwork on canvas or it's primarily on wood? I, I use materials? all different materials. I use canvas, I use wood, I have banners that hang with grommets, I use sewing, I use paper, I make uh, my own paper, handmade oh, paper. So I'm, I'm very intuitive You're and multi-dimensional like multi-dimensional and and, and uh, I like the fact that I don't set limitations for myself what my, my whole thing well you let your creativity soar and I love that about you George now tell me now what is the largest size painting you've created like do they vary in sizes they vary in sizes, but I, ha I have to say I worked on the largest painting uh -huh. that exists in the world. Oh, really? 257 feet, 10, wow. 12 feet high uh, with Knox Martin where I was Very his assistant. Okay. And we painted this thing uh, 45 years ago when he was teaching at Yale and I was his assistant. So we paint, and, and this was on Chamber Street, a couple of blocks from where the World Trade Center would be. And it went completely around the block. Wow. So af after you do something that scale, you're totally desensitized and you can work any size. Okay. So the thing that interests me is I like working real small and I like working real large. And my Achilles heel was how can you do work that's as strong and make it feel large on a, okay. medium, on a medium scale. Okay. Do you cu do custom made work or clients would purchase stuff that you have already made? How does that work? Uh, I've done I've done both, and I've done I've done commissions, and uh, right now I'm represented by a gallery in East Hampton, Lawrence Fine Art, and uh, I have a, another gallery that's interested in picking me up, Fusion Gallery in Miami. Okay, very nice. And I have a big show scheduled 
for this uh, summer at the Huntington Art League, which is the oldest art league on Long Island, so I'll be showing probably around 45 new paintings oh, wow. at the league this summer. And, uh, and George, also, you did an event last night over at Beth Shalom Temple, right? You were showcasing your work correct. there, too. Correct. I have... Uh, Which, that's very nice to do that at temples, especially since correct. you have a Judaic um, foundation to a lot of your work. I think, you know, that resonates with a lot of, you know, people in the area. So well, it was good. fantastic because... Yeah. Uh, I met a fellow who's a filmmaker, mm -hmm. and what occurred was he uh, was so taken by my personality, not knowing the strength of the work, that he committed to doing the, this documentary. And I, at the time, didn't know what I was going to paint, but I was coached up by these rabbis, and they said, you know, you have to really be strong and represent us, and blah, blah. And I didn't want to be in my head, and I wanted this thing also to be spontaneous. So I spent three months thinking about what I was going to do, and it turned out that the painting uh, was about the Holocaust, because my uh, the guy I'm named after lost half of his family in the Holocaust. He left a wife and four children, but he brought four children here, married again, had four children, she had three children, then he, she passed away, and he married again, oh, wow. had a three lot of more marriages. children. <laughs> Sounds so, like too many. So this is my great, <laughs> this is the guy who... <laughs> to take care of. <laughs> exactly. So 11 like children. Funds, Ele so one, and one being the yeah. Ida Diamond, who Frida <laughs> Diamond was my, my mentor and, and friend. And, and uh, interestingly enough, uh, Frida's sister married uh, Phil Stern, who wrote It's a Wonderful Life. So I actually met um, Jimmy Stewart and uh, Frank Capra as a kid. And uh, that became part of my legacy, you know, my heritage, being, being uh, one of, call it the it crowd, the, the A-League creative people. Uh, not even realizing it, but just call it a rite of passage. Okay, wonderful. Well, what I love about George is, you know, he exudes um, zealousness about his art. He's clearly very passionate, and he's very talented, and everything that you do, eh, he just has a creative spirit to him. All right, so nice to have you on the show. Can you tell people um, where they can purchase your artwork if they would like? Uh, you can go to my uh, website, which is georgeshulmanartist.com, and my email is uh, georgeshulmanartist uh, at gmail.com. And are you on social media, George? Yes, I'm okay, on Facebook. Good. I have a Facebook page. So people can get page. George on Facebook. Absolutely. And message him if you're interested in this artwork. And what is your upcoming event? And you uh, well, we have Art Miami, yep. and, we'll, and we'll have work in Miami and that's in, in a big the next one. few weeks. All right, wonderful. I love Art Miami. That's a great um, event. But wonderful having um, you, George, here on Stellar Style. So George Shulman for wonderful Cubism art, with and it has like a Picasso feel to it. Um, and we'll see you next time on Stellar Style with Lydian.